coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited. The Reno Air Races are cancelled. Zero Avia conducts the UK's first commercial scale electric flight. And 737 MAX certification flights could start today. Welcome, I'm Sophie Herlock. Out of concern for health, safety, and restrictions on large gatherings still in place. The Reno Air Racing Association has decided to cancel the 2020 Steel National Championship Air Races, originally scheduled for September 16th through the 20th. The organization is now looking towards planning and hosting their 57th Steel National Championship Air Races, which will be held September 15th through the 19th of 2021. Fred Telling, CEO of the Reno Air Racing Association, stated this decision was not made lightly and we're going to greatly miss our September family this year. But the safety of our fans, pilots, staff, volunteers, and community is always our top priority. If you've already purchased a ticket for the 2020 event, you have the option of rolling over your ticket to the 2021 event, donating your ticket amount as a tax-deductible contribution, or you can request a refund. However, you must make your decision no later than July 15th. Otherwise, your ticket will be automatically rolled over to the 2021 event. The association also asks everyone who is able to please donate to their 2021 event as their events take a year to plan and due to the economic impact of the pandemic, they're already at a shortage for next year's budget. You can make your donation by going to airrace.org. Stick around because when we return, we'll have the latest on Spaceship 2's second glide flight. Like most of you, we're still working from home. We miss being around pilots. But the most important thing right now is to mitigate your risks and use this time productively while we all get through this. Folks, King Schools is open and we're 100% operational. We're making sure that your courses work and are available for you 24-7. We look forward to the time when we can see you again at the airport. Affordable and economical, Pipistrol is proud to present the Alpha Trainer. Offering excellent fuel efficiency and a durable composite design, the Alpha Trainer can be operated from virtually anywhere. Whether you're a first-time aircraft owner, assembling a fleet, or running a flight school, the Light Sport Alpha Trainer from Pipistrol is a dynamic option. Learn more about what the Pipistrol Alpha Trainer can do for you at pipistrol-usa.com. Swift Fuels proudly introduces the Forever Avgas STC. One simple upfront purchase entitles the Forever STC certificate holder to receive all current and future Avgas STCs that the FAA issues to Swift Fuels. The best part? It's priced today at only $100, and the prepaid certificate never expires. Get your Forever Avgas STC today at swiftfuelsavgas.com. Welcome back, it's time for today's trip around the patch. Last Thursday, Virgin Galactic Spaceship 2 successfully completed its second test flight from Spaceport America in New Mexico. The spaceship achieved a glide speed of Mach 0.85 after being released from the mothership VMS Eve at an altitude of 51,000 feet. This glide flight marks another important milestone as the team at Virgin Galactic is now one step closer towards the launch of their commercial service. The D-Day Squadron will be flying aircraft over the Truckee Tahoe community this Saturday, July 4th, to celebrate our nation's independence and honor frontline healthcare workers battling the pandemic. Called the Truckee Tahoe Honor Flyover, flights are scheduled to run from 11 a.m. till 12.30 p.m., covering 18 targeted landmarks and stretching 130 nautical miles. Out of respect for social distancing measures, no public viewings or gatherings are permitted. Instead, the squadron is encouraging residents to hashtag look up. On June 24th, North American Aerospace Defense Command F-22s, supported by a KC-135 Strato tanker, intercepted two Russian IL-38 Maritime Patrol aircraft entering the Alaskan Air Defense Identification Zone. The Russian aircraft came within 50 miles of Unimark Island along the Aleutian Island chain, spending approximately four hours in the ADIZ before exiting. The IL-38s remained in international airspace, and at no time did the aircraft enter United States or Canadian sovereign airspace. At 1.39 p.m. on Friday, NASA astronauts Chris Cassidy and Robert Benkin concluded their spacewalk after six hours and seven minutes. 
This was the first of four spacewalks planned to replace batteries that provide power for the station's solar arrays on the starboard truss of the complex. Their next spacewalk is planned for Wednesday. We'll be right back with the rest of the news. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. Sandia introduces the new SAI 340 Quattro TSO'd airspeed, attitude, altitude, and slip. With integral backup battery, safety never looked so good. See it now at www.sandia.aero. Avia conducted the UK's first ever electric powered flight of a commercial scale aircraft from its base at Cranfield Airport. The aircraft was developed as part of the government funded High Flyer project and eventually will complete a 300 nautical mile test journey from Scotland's Orkney Islands to the UK. Zero Avia is focused on developing a hydrogen fuel cell power train, which has the same zero emission potential of battery electric, but has a much more promising energy to weight ratio, making it viable for commercial operations at a much larger scale and in a shorter time frame. Additionally, the hydrogen electric power train is projected to have lower operating costs due to the high cost of battery cycling and typical high utilization regional aircraft. Zero Avia also plans to have commercially relevant Certified 10 to 20 seat configurations ready to go within three years, and 50 to 100 seat configurations in flight by the end of the decade. Key certification test flights for the Boeing 737 MAX could begin as early as today. In an email to Congress on Sunday, the FAA stated its Type Inspection Authorization Board has completed its review. Quote, clearing the way for flight certification testing to begin. Flights with FAA test pilots could begin as early as tomorrow, evaluating Boeing's proposed changes to the automated flight control system on the 737 MAX. However, the email also stated the FAA has not made a decision on when the 737 MAX can return to service. The airplane has been grounded since March of last year, after two fatal crashes killed 346 people. And that was our last story of the day. Thanks for tuning in. If you liked today's episode, don't forget to click the subscribe button and to check us out on Facebook and on Twitter. For more aviation and aerospace news any time of the day, head over to aero-news.net. I'll see you back here on Wednesday.